All right, OEB Pete, classy gaming fun. This video is called Intellivision Amico Countdown, the pros and cons of a soft launch. This is my first time watching this video. Let's go. Hey everybody, welcome to the channel dedicated to modern retro video games. And this is the countdown to the Intellivision Amico. This is pre-recorded prior to July 16th because I'm on vacation, but I'll be back soon. Anyway, so I just wanted to talk a little bit about all the news around the Intelligent Amico and talk about, yes, the title of this video is the pros and cons of a soft launch. So that's the main subject we're gonna talk about today. But first I got a little bit of news. So here Pros and cons of a soft launch. Why don't you talk about the cons of how garbage the games are? Why don't you talk about the cons of how Scammeroni lied that there's a Karma engine, Karma engine patent pending computer chip in the damn foot bath. Why don't you talk about the cons of how the controller is all lagging? It doesn't really work properly. To use the screen, uh, tapping the screen to jump in Finnegan Fox, that doesn't work properly. Why don't you talk about the obvious cons around it? No, he's gonna stick to stupid pros and cons of a soft launch. What launch? They didn't even launch anything. Hit that subscribe, smash that like button. More importantly, get in the comments, and we'll chat it up when I get back. The arm swing. All right, the first a bit of news before we get into the main topic of pros and cons. You know how much I love doing pros and cons on this channel, right? Yeah, I do. I've, I've... You're just a shill, OEB Pete. You're never honest with any of your honest takes. No friggin' way you're going to be all shilled out and just soften everything up so it makes scammer only look good I've done quite a few on different products so anyway um let's talk about the first bit of news well it's official amazon canada has the amico available for pre-order yes it <laughs> the amazon has the amico available for pre-order go ahead guys go quickly to amazon and get your pre-order and it's only limit i'm sure it's going to be limited quantity and there's not going to be that many you better get your pre-order in quickly what a disaster. This guy's shilling for the fact that Amazon Canada, Canada has Amico ready for pre-order. What, for $379.99 for a foot bath and $99.99 for an extra controller? And then $180 bucks for, uh, Canadian for the eight games? That's over half a grand. Like, look at how much you're spending. Th there's one way, there's only one way to justify this, right? There's one way to justify the Amico coming to coming to the market is the price that it's going to be at. The price has to justify what the product is. So if this thing is at max 70 or $80 Canadian, right? In the plug and play section of the Walmart toil. Okay. Then I can see that, but for God's sakes, everything incorporated over half a half a grand. It's up on amazon.ca. You can get it right there right now and it's available. The black system is there. All Look, I, I can see the prices right here on, th these are the older prices. I can see it right near, right now on the screen. $330.29 for Canadian for the Amico Black with one controller. And then the extra controller is $87. That's more, that's more money than a PS5 controller. That's more money than the new Xbox controller. Like, are you kidding me? $330 for the console when you can just pay a little, 20 bucks more or something and get like a Switch with ultimately way better games on it. Ridiculous. Also, controllers are up there right now. Canadian's $87 Canadian. It's funny, it's a few dollars cheaper um, than, uh, than uh, EB Games. But anyway, um, it is what it is. It's up on uh, Amazon.ca. So, you know what? That's a good sign, right? They're actually showing up on the major retailers now in North America. So it was all a con job. Okay. There was not supposed to be in a release. It was just to get you guys excited. So then you can start investing in the damn system. And then all this other stuff of like, oh, putting it on GameStop and putting it on Amazon and having it available like to click on and pre-order. That's just so they cross their T's and dot their I's so that they actually did their due diligence to try and release it. They didn't just take the money, which they really did, took take the gold coins, Alvarado's pirate ship into the Cayman Islands. They really did that, but they didn't want to make it look like they just did that. So they had to do this little, oh, we're trying our best to put it on this platform and this platform to sell. Anyway, I'm happy. Anytime Canada gets stuff, I get happy. Why not? Oh, Canada. 
<laughs> yeah, I love Canada. All right, the next thing is about we just we're a few weeks. Away. Canada is so cocked by Trudeau, and then Trudeau is basically owned by the Chinese government. We're cocked by China. China is basically secretly owned by China. Uh, Canada is secretly owned by China, and Trudeau is basically a globalist that works for China. Uh, remove from the Crayola experience, and Tommy has mentioned a few times in other videos that you know, in a separate issue, and you know how these all these uh these uh, mass shootings are happening, these mass shootings like the happened in California, whatever that club or whatever the Lunar New Year mass shoot, and 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 I saw I saw one uh like this this one video on YouTube or like one of these ads and the headline, and it was. Police are looking for a motive for the shooter. What motive? You don't need a motive anymore. The world sucks. The government's corrupt. Inflation's up the yin yang. Prices are going up. Value of living's going down. Everything's getting screwed up in the world. There doesn't need to be a motive. It's just that everything sucks. We're gonna be doing more intelligent and lethal events throughout the U.S. this summer, and they're actually... Okay, so OEBBP talking about global Amico events. Can we get more than 24 hours notice for these events, please? Can we get more than 24 hours notice for the Crayola event so that real people can show up and actually review this foot bath? Not your controlled shills and your controlled investors that come in? No, no, we want real people. Give at least a one week or two week notice so real people can show up and play this damn thing and then actually go online and write a blog like yeah what's the big point of these games they're garbage hoping to get over to england and europe yes so that's really cool news that they can get over i know somebody in england will be excited to go play the amico right mr kid the the <laughs> only the only one in uh, england that's going to be excited to play this thing is that prick snestastic the uh the amico kid friggin sits there with a stupid british accent thinking he's so smart and sophisticated just because he talks in a specific way, sits there in front of a fireplace with his legs crossed, with his fitted jeans and his turtleneck sweater, uh, with, with, a, with, a, with a book in one hand and an iPad in another hand, legs crossed, fireplace on, thinking he's so smart. That guy is a piece of trash. The Amico kid, aka Snestastic, you are garbage. <laughs> yeah, so that's pretty cool. I think that's the whole thing. This system needs to get in hands. The finished product needs to get in people's hands to play it. You know, a lot of people have been asking me, Pete, how do you feel? A lot of people have been playing it. Are you feeling jealous? Of course I'm feeling jealous. I want to play it. But I'm like that with any system I anticipate. I just Okay, if you want to play it so badly, go online, search up Evil Knievel and play it as all you want. Go play Fox and Forest right now. Go play uh, Rigid Force Redux, whatever that game is called. Go play that right now. Go play Amico Charades and go play Sesame, Sesame Street is literally a flash game it's a flash game do you boomers understand what that means a flash game the most basic easiest thing to make with no resources needed to make it it's just so easy to make a flash game that that sesame street game was literally a flash game and scammeroni that greasy leprechaun was like oh wow we got the sesame street license i want to play it and then give my honest thoughts on it all right Let's get into some pros and cons of a possible soft launch. Now, ultimately... A possible soft launch. How about you talking about a possible launch? How about actually launching the damn console? I think the best decision is to have a full-blown launch. <laughs> OEB Pete dreaming once again. They're going to have a... Uh, Amico is just going to have a full-blown launch with everything, you know... Sunshine and lollipops, California, Irvine, California. Everyone's happy, having a good time in that libtard state. They just think everything's going to be nice and dandy with a nice full launch of the Amico. But that seems less and less likely as all of the conversation seems to kind of be pointing that way. It's coming less and less likely as more and more truth is being put on the internet by people like Pat and Ian that were actually exposing this for what it was. As, as soon as the more truth come out and more exposure comes out, then they start, then Omiko was like, oh, we're gonna have a soft launch. Now all of a sudden there is no launch. And now the only things launched are those two test pilot foot bats that went into DJ Cuck's hand and Mike Molest. So let's talk theoretically about a soft launch. And we're gonna talk about the cons first. Um, you know, the cons, well, it's pretty much going to be big perception. First con is going to be they missed their dates. <laughs> how many times, how many times has Amico promised a launch date on this specific date or certain time? 
and they never went through it. How many times has Amico said they're going to make an announcement here or they're going to release more information here and they never did? How many times did they lie over and over and over again? Again. And so the perception is they're just doing a soft launch. Is, is the system going to be out en masse and all those things? And then I think another con was going to be early reviews of the system might be negative so they run the risk if we don't even need we didn't even need to have the system launch to review it negatively we can see it for what it is why can't you guys just look at the the all the people that are possibly listening to this video that invested in the thing all you people that actually invested why couldn't you just see the games and be like why am i excited about these games when i can play something 10 times better on my phone right now why am I getting excited about these games when I can go online Google, search up any game in the Google search bar and play a browser game that's better than any of these games? Why couldn't you guys just see the games instead of being cucked by the Intellivision brand, see the actual games and be like, what's the point of this? Why am I investing money? They do put the system out on a soft launch that early buzz, and this could be a full launch. They could still get negative reviews, but you gotta let the console speak for itself. And I think it, you know, that at the end of the day is what most important is the console speaking for itself, the games speaking for themselves. So I think the games speaking for themselves. Yeah, they have spoken for themselves. They're complete trash, OEB Pete. Those are some of the cons. I think the big one a lot of people is going to run with is, oh, they couldn't, they missed their official launch date again. But I want to focus on the pros. No, no. Oh, so he's got two cons. That, that's his pro and cons. It's literally two cons. That's it. I can think of a million cons that's wrong with this stupid console. And then this guy makes a point like, oh, I think the biggest negative thing is gonna they missed their launch date. No, no, we know exactly what's happening there. Anyone smart can be like, yeah, they're just prolonging the launch date because they don't really have anything done and they just want more investor money. They just want to keep kicking the can down the road and make you try to invest more and more money so they can get your gold coins and run away with it. That's what it is. And this guy's like, this guy's like, let the games speak for themselves. No, the games are absolute trash. The games are literally absolute garbage. The only game that I was actually looking at was Earthworm Jim 4 because I thought they were going to do something cool. Then it comes out that Scammer and he's like, yeah, it's just mini games. It's nothing special. Yeah, see, it's just lackluster garbage quality games. Because there's, you can make you can make tons of negative uh, cons about it and that's fine like people people can make different cons about it's it. not making tons of negative cons it's that the negative cons completely overwrite any positive about the system but i think those are the two big ones i'm so curious to hear what the positives are but let's talk about the pros of a soft launch i am a huge proponent of a soft launch because the one major thing is your product is out the door. It's live. It's in the wild. <laughs> it's out. How is that even a product? How, I mean, how is that even a positive? The product is out there. You're just stating a fact of it, of something launching. You're not even stating an actual positive. What's positive about the product being out there? Nothing. It's trash. What happened it, when the pos, when the product does go out there? The negative that's happening toward that is people's banks. Uh, you know, bank statements and wallets are getting hit by a lot of money for such a trash console that plays garbage games. The product is out there. Not it's, Technically, it's only out there in two people's hands, and that's Mike Molest and DJ Cuck. And they're not going to tell you the truth of what it is. They're not going to tell you the truth and break down what they saw. They're just going to lie and chill for the system like they've always been doing. People are enjoying it or experiencing it. I think what happened to OEB Pete was he was probably shilling for this so hard. And then him and Scamaroni, him and Tommy Tallarico had a conversation. And I think Tommy Tallarico told OEB Pete, OEB Pete, I appreciate your uh, help, but uh, I think we should just wrap it up. I think I think you should move on to other things now. It's not looking too good. And then OEB Pete's like, since he's such a cuck that he's gonna listen to anything that Greasy Leprechaun tells him. Uh, and, and he's just, he was just like, yeah, Tommy, you're right. I, I think I was just gonna switch to something else. I think that's what happened to OEB Pete. Or not enjoying it. Like I said, one of the cons is you got to be prepared for some negative feedback from people who bought it, right? But a soft launch, I think it's important because it shows to the public, it gives confidence to the public that the product is here in your hands. Have fun with it. The hardcore backers of the system, 
you know, the X percent, depending on how big a soft launch could possibly. Literally the 15 to 20 hardcore backers, which is the complete Amico cult. There's no one else that's a hardcore backer of this cucked in television brand with garbage shovelware mobile games than the Amico cult itself. It could be the 2,600 founders. It could be the 12,000 VIPs or whatever that number was. They get rewarded for their their actual faith in the system, their investment in the fish. Uh, system. What happened to your faith, OEB Pete? You had so much faith in the system. What happened to you? You just scurried away, changed your YouTube name to Classy Gaming Fun. That didn't work. Then you changed to friggin' pack opening Pete, and now you're ever Canadian. So I'm putting down that $100 refundable deposit. They get the system. And that hundred dollar refundable deposit refundable keyword refundable how many people have tried to get their refund back and they're not getting it back how many people go on dj cucks live stream asking for their refund back and they get banned right there on the spot from the live stream uh cyrus martin swiss cheese cyrus martin that dumb oaf tried so hard to get his refund back. He had to write email after email to Intellivision to get his refund back. Then that same piece of trash even told Intellivision to take me off of all your promotional videos because he realized how stupid he looked. It's really a good news story. That is a very good news story. So I think that is such a pro of doing a soft launch. People like me will have the system and be able to experience, uh, experience it, but show you myself playing it, my kids playing it. My You're the last person I'll go to to get any kind of honest review about the Intellivision. You're the last person, OEB Pete, you freak, you loser. You're the last person I would ever go to to ask for an honest opinion because everything you do is lie and everything you do is a shill. Family, other YouTubers, other uh, journalists can... If you're so honest, why didn't you keep your channel, OEB Pete? Why did you have to change it to Classy Gaming Fund, then change it to Pack Opening Pete, and now you're Ever Canadian, and now you're shilling for the Evercade? Why don't you be honest and keep your old channel? Pre-ordered it, because there's tons of journalists who have pre-ordered it. They will have the system. Now let's talk about some of the, some of the things that are important with any new product launch, which I think is a huge pro. Okay, you can iron out the firmware. Now, of course, ironing out the firmware, people can see that as a negative. Oh, they're firmware testing. Okay, they had they had job opening positions at their and television headquarters saying we need people to make the system run. They had all these job openings that were never filled because the firmware is like never was never done. It's a friggin' cell phone. It's a friggin' Chinese cell phone chip from China in the damn system. Buggy firmware. Well, I'd like to see any product. I have not seen any gaming product launch with a perfect firmware. One of my f favorite products of all time, the Evercade, has had four, I think, firmware updates in one year. And now the system is getting better incrementally. So I see ironing out the firmware of the system as a positive. You know, giving that player a better, more stable experience. And I'm not saying it's going to come out buggy. I'm just saying they can they can have time to improve it. It didn't even come out. There was nothing even done for the damn. Every time we saw the Amico, uh, Intellivision Amico video from them, it was always hooked up to a laptop, then hooked up to a uh, TV screen, or hooked up to a computer. They had the they had the demo of that uh, game, that German game that they're making, and it was they were playing it with Xbox controllers. They weren't even playing it on the Amico. For the official launch. This game, this, this system is primarily a digital system. Sure, there's some physical games, but they're tied to a digital down. They're not physical games, you dummy. Get it straight. They're not physical games. They were physical products. They even had that in the disclaimer. And television had that in the disclaimer. These are physical products. These are not games. They're physical products with a chance that they become RFID games later on. Okay, you guys all got duped. Everyone, the, every one of you morons that bought the friggin' uh, full eight packet, uh, the eight pack, the eight games RFID chips. They're not even games. They're physical products. Download most likely. We still don't know all the details on that, but let's say Amico is a digital system. There's a digital store. We all know anything to deal with online and purchasing. There'll be bugs they need to iron out. So it gives them an opportunity to test their online infrastructure. They never even had the online infrastructure done. They had nothing completed. They had no backend stuff done. It says in the SCC documents, I can't remember the complete details. It said in there that they need like 5 million or something to get this, the backend done, which means they're not even close to being finished. They're for downloading and purchasing games. 
That SEC document, I repeat, has everything you need to know about what really happened with the Intellivision and the state of Intellivision. Right? Their leaderboard system, all those stuff, their UI system gives them opportunities, right, to test that. And then the next one is a huge pro is they can test out the games, genres that they're going to have available. Which one are proven to be more popular? You know they've already said, hopefully this still is something in the plans. that The games are complete trash. I would literally put the games as a con. Why would you want to play any of those games? Why would you pay that much money? Remember, it goes back down to money, right? It's about how much money you spend for the product you're getting. That's the ultimate, that's the ultimate bottom line is how much money do you spend for the product that you are getting? And no over half a grand for eight shovelware games and a foot bath with two controllers is not worth it. They have a rating system on their store for games. They can all of a sudden get this all back and say, you know what, these are the games that are getting rated highest. These are the games that are getting played the most. These are the games getting purchased. And allows them to, my favorite word, pivot perhaps before official launch. Shift some developments of future games into a different genre. All the development of those six packing games were made just because they had enough money from that German grant money, all right? You know, it's just more information available can only be a pro. And they can iron out their customer service, which, you know, there's going to be something like... People customer service? We're, we have people asking for refunds and they're not getting any response. We have people on the Republic page asking Phil Adam, Shill Adam, what's going on? And he's getting, there's no response. What customer service are you talking about? Gonna... The, the only customer service that existed was Amico After Dark when that retro bro piece of trash, Care Bear wearing shill, was actually being the PR and customer service for the company. Uh, sending emails or doing chats or whatever their system is asking for more information. How do I do this? What do I do about that? They can iron out that entire infrastructure and get it going. So like those are some of the pros that I think for me outweighs them not doing anything with products this year so like i mean my biggest fear i think for everybody at intelligent is if the product doesn't launch at all this year well it didn't launch at all this year so what do you have to say for yourself oevp are you gonna get a follow-up video and what your thoughts are now of the intelligent no you're not because you're a piece of trash you're a cuck and you're never going to say anything truthful that comes to mind and it goes into 20 22. And if that's the case, fine, be with it. We're going to support it. That's what we're here for. We're fans of the system. Well, you never supported it, right? You stopped supporting it. You stopped shilling for it after you realized how much of a failure it was. We're fans of the people building it. And everything I've seen so far from all the hands-on tests, testimonials from my friends who are playing it and have played it. All your friends that played it are shills as well. They're not going to tell you the truth. I've just cemented my support even more. But that doesn't mean you can't still offer constructive criticism and give your opinion on things in a constructive way which i'm doing here i think a soft launch what why do you need constructive criticism look at the games they're trash end of story look at the look at the how much they're offering the system for with the games over half a grand that's ridiculous end of story if they can't do an official major launch a soft launch is probably the next best thing and i think it could work wonders and i only have to point to the atari vcs because they got their system out in a little soft launch to all their backers. Sure, say what you want. I've said this many times on a channel. It might not have been everything they wanted originally with it, but they got it out the door. They officially launched in June, and the sentiment is slowly starting to get a little bit more positive. Atari still has a long way to go. But like I no one cares about these retro reimagined games. Like I would rather play it on the original Atari. I'd rather play in television games on the original in television. I think Amico is much, much better position, but time will tell. So there you go. Hopefully you have a great day, and I'm going to say it. You subscribe, you smash that like button. I appreciate it all. Get in the comments, have a chat with me, and you have an Amico day. Even Yoshi, yes. Look at this royalty-free, generic, trash music that he puts on in the background to act all innocent and nice and... Oh, he's just an honest, he's such an honest reviewer, honest opinion, talking about the intel. No, you're a piece of trash shill. That's such a liar, OEB Pete. You're a yeah, maniac. Even Yoshi. Nah, I love Yoshi. Bye, everyone. Oh my god, OEB Pete is so pathetic. He's such a pathetic person that was never honest with any of his reviews of the Intellivision. He was just wanting to be... He wanted to be Tommy Tallarico's best friend, a secondhand man to do whatever he wanted. He was so excited that he was going to be, he has talking to some celebrity in the video game industry that has seven, 
Guinness World Book of Records and everyone's a friend of his and all that. That's all OEV Pete was. He is just his own selfish gain. He never did an honest review. Peace.